Welcome back to another episode of the Roblox Studio Tutorials. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a settings menu that you can configure and customize to your liking. All right, so we're in studio and the first thing I want to show first is the actual GUI and everything and how I made that. So here we have the settings GUI. This is the main frame. We have the bottom bar, which stores this reset default button. Here we have the options list, which is where the, all of the options are laid out. Down below that, we have the tabs list, which is where we keep store of all of the settings tabs. Now, if we head down to the last frame, which is top bar, this is where we keep the settings title label. Now that's pretty much all that goes into the settings main GUI. If we were to populate these lists, for example, real quick, here we have the tab example, which is just where all the tabs are located so if you had like four tabs it looks something like this the names and the icons would be different of course and all the options right here now in this option example we have multiple different type of like opponents is that what i call them boolean value which if the option is a boolean we can turn on and off here or we can have a slider which just have the slider value and this number right here which tells you what the value is of the slider and we have the last one which is the choices value and you can select which choice and that's where you would do that we head down to the top bar handler this just controls the settings button which is right here when it's clicked when it's hovered over that type of stuff and the animation controller module script is down here handles the tweening of the frames and the tweening of the blur in this modules folder we have a play sound module which plays the sound and maybe it randomizes it if the randomized variable is set to true and we have the settings module or settings man manager module which is where the core of the system is located so if we head into that settings manager so in the settings manager let's start from the beginning which is the initialize settings and this initial settings we're looping through all of the tabs so in the settings tabs we can go to settings config and that's where the settings tabs will be located now if we head out of the script and go down below that module script and to the settings config now in the settings config here is where we can config the settings tabs the settings options and the default settings so first let's go into the settings tab one you see that we have the three settings tabs audio graphics and gameplay so if we head back here this is just looping through the audio graphics and gameplay and creating all of the tabs like you saw at the left side of that uh, settings menu. Now collapsing that and going back into this one, which is right below it, is the settings options. Now the settings options is taking those tabs and loading in all of the options that are associated with those tabs. So now in the script, in order, creating each and every one of these options, like shadows, it's gonna be in the graphics tab. The shadow quality, graphics tab, music volume, audio tab. If we were to dive deeper into what's going on, we are getting the name of the option and we are getting the component. So the component class can be three different things. It can either be a range, where we just choose between a range of zero to one. It can either be a Boolean, which choose between Boolean true or false. It can either be choose between options low, normal, and highest. This is just an example. You can change these. Now this initialized settings is getting called from the client. So if you were to head out of the script and go down into the starter player, starter player scripts, UI, the initialized settings is being called from the settings handler script and this settings handler client script after loading in all of the variables we see the initialized settings function that we see here and we also see a whole bunch of other stuff here we are caching all the tabs and we're checking when their mouse is hovering over them and when they are clicked we select that tab and in the select tab function we just enable that tab and we unselect all the other tabs and down below here in this little section we just uh, wait until the options handler is done loading in all of the options so let's head out of the script go right under the script into options handler now within the script checks if the player has previous data or if they don't if they do have data we set their user settings to that data and if they don't have data we just set it to the default settings down below that if we head into here we load the options into memory all of the options that we've just created in the settings handler script after initializing the settings we check their component class let's say you had music disabled in this option if you had music disabled it would go to the option music volume and it would set the music volume to the value that you have it set to whether true or false now this function doesn't do it but this toggle option value if we were to head to settings controller this is where we actually are applying that music volume change in the settings updater that applies settings. So if we were to go down below that into settings updater, here in this settings updater, let's say we wanted to enable or disable shadows, here is where we would do it. Game.lighting.global shadows equals value, which can either be true or false because the shadows option is a Boolean. And that's about it for this system. If you have any questions about it, leave it down in the comments below. I'll try my best to solve any problems you may have. In this video, I'll show you how to make a teleport system where you can teleport it between places in a game. Let me show you how I made it. <laughs> 